So Google is going through an antitrust case right now and recently a US court declared that Google is a monopoly and in March of this year their algorithm documentation was also leaked accidentally to the public. So there's a lot of things happening to Google behind the scenes but being an SEO enthusiast myself and a website owner I am more interested in see what I can learn from this and one of the interesting things happening with the justice department case on Google is that they had to make a lot of their internal documentation public which reveals three interesting things or I'd say secret SEO things that Google has publicly denied but they actually use and they worked in SEO. So I'm going to be telling you those three things that you can start using and doing on your website to get higher rankings in this video. So make sure to watch it till the end. So the first secret that was revealed in this investigation and with documentation that was made public is that Google heavily uses user data or user experience data, user click data and user behavior to understand which content is good and it is a huge part of their rankings. Now back in 2016, one of their internal documentations showed that back in 2016, they didn't understand or Google didn't understand content or documentation to a great degree. This is their own words, not mine. But what they did was they just looked at how users engaged with content. So if you made a specific query or a user made a specific query, they clicked on a result. That was the first signal to Google that, hey, this is great. User is clicking through. And then if users spend time on the page, that was also a quality signal that this is a good piece of quality content. So basically click through rate, user interaction, bounce rate, time spent on site, all of these are important metrics. Now, of course, this was back in 2016 when Google didn't have great understanding. With 2024, all the AI models have improved. So Google might have developed a better understanding, but still the ranking factors with respect to clicks, uh, time spent on site and high quality content still exists. And you should definitely not ignore them when you're looking at an overall SEO strategy. So let me show you how to optimize your website for these metrics right now. This is a sample website that I have and I've created a blog post here called Grow Your Own Food, A Beginner's Guide to Home Vegetable Gardening. So the first thing we have to do when we are to looking to optimize our content or I'd say uh, ensuring that people come to website is to ensure that people come to website. That means we have to sell the click to them. And to sell the click, we just have a few different things we can do. We can optimize the headline and the meta descriptions because that's what users see. For example, on this website, I am using all-in-one SEO. And all of us here has a fantastic feature where you can see the title and the meta description directly here as a preview on desktop and mobile as well. And I can see this is a very long title, uh, so I can see it here. And I can change the post title, the meta description, and also all of us has a fantastic feature called the true SEO score and also the headline analyzer. So the headline analyzer is telling me if I click on this H button here, this headline is maybe a score of 48. So if I improve the headline, then I'm more likely to get the clicks, right? So let's do this. Uh, I'll delete this and I'll remove this and let's see, oops, I can't select. Let's delete this part and I'll just do this. Let's see how the headline improves. Maybe it will improve, maybe not. So it's slightly better. So let's try and something else as well to improve this. So in just a couple of seconds, I modified the headline. I changed a couple of words around and now I have a much better headline, which will stand out in the search results better than my previous headline. So if I go here and look at the preview here, the ultimate guide or our ultimate guide to vegetable home vegetable gardening. So I can even remove the a and say the ultimate guide. This sounds much better in my opinion. I mean, you can go here. Now this looks much better, right? And even the headline analyzer is giving us a score of 73 out of 100. And there's some more advice I can do. There's more improvements I can do here, but this looks good enough. And let's say it's much better than the previous headline I have. So once I do this, I have a much more high, or I'd say much higher likelihood of getting the click first. And of course I can go here inside all in one SEO and improve the meta description, which is set to post excerpt. So I can, let's say, customize this. I'm gonna say, So in a couple of seconds, I also modified the meta description here. And now this looks a much better search result to look at. So I changed this to, if you're looking to grow fruits, vegetables, or herbs in your home garden, this is a perfect guide for you. It covers everything from soil to maintenance. And using all in one SEO's character recommendation here, I was able to make sure that the, uh, the description that I see here will not be truncated on any result or any, I said, device. So this is how all in one SEO can help you. And this is how you can ensure 
that users actually land on your website. That's the first part of getting the click, right? So once the user lands on your website, the next part is to optimize the content. So how do you optimize the content? Of course, you have to write better content, relevant content, and some things you can do to ensure that the users actually stay on your website is to just first confirm their click. So the first paragraph should just talk about, hey, uh, this is what this website is about, or this is what this blog post is about. So make sure that they reach the first paragraph and they know exactly that they have landed on the right page. And then make sure the content is formatted well. You answer all the relevant questions, right? And you can also add more media to the page. Images, videos always help. So if you add more media, more images, and if it's a how-to, then adding images to every step of the process can help engage the users and make sure that they spend enough time on your website. Another thing to do is to add internal links to other linking content. So if you have more content about this, so you can just link out to those websites or those as a pages. So that users, when they land on the, on the site, they have a lot of content to consume. So the more they time, spend time on the website, the more Google will understand that, hey, this is a great website about this topic and they'll rank you higher in the search results. So that was the first secret. What's the second secret? Well, technically it's a little conflicting, but Google revealed that they had 18 different quality metrics that they use to rank content. And one of the most important factors there, which I'll place on the screen as well, is freshness of content. Now, if you write great content, you have excellent content, it might rank for a while, but you might notice that over time, the traffic goes down on that specific blog post or your website in general. That is because the freshness of the content is also a huge factor. So what you should be paying attention to is not just how good the content was, but how good the content is today and how frequently you can keep up to date. Now, one of the best ways to do this is by looking at real-time data of what pages and content, or I'd say which pages on your site and which keywords are getting more impressions and less impressions. And you can find all of this data in Google Search Console. It provides you all the data about regarding impressions, regarding which pages are ranking higher and all the security things and everything else. Google Search Console is great at that. But the better way to do this is by using All-in-One SEO's Search Appearance Report. Now, inside that report, it gives you a content decay report, which is very powerful because it gives you kind of four kinds of reports based on pages, keywords, impressions, and CTR. So basically it'll tell you that what pages are increasing in rankings or in decreasing in rankings, or which keywords are increasing in impressions and decreasing in impressions, what impressions are going up, which impressions are going down, and what pages CTR is going up and what pages CTR is going down. Now, based on this information, you can realistically instantly, or I say quickly see that these are the pages that are losing traffic, losing impressions, losing CTR. So I can quickly refresh them and this important page, I can keep up to date over time. So Google will see this, that this is a fresh piece of content, or at least it's frequently updated so that the rankings will go higher. Now, all of this can be done in Search Console, but you might need to download the data and parse it in spreadsheets or like do something to see the analysis or set trends over time or run internal, I'd say, analysis inside Search Console. It's not a very e easy or I'd say, a quick method. But the search appearance report in all in SEO makes it absolutely easy. So make sure to have all in SEO installed on site. I'll have links to all the products I'm mentioning in the description. And you can use that report to instantly and quickly see which are the pages that are the most highest priority that you should be updating frequently. All right, so that was secret number two. But the secret number three, in my opinion, is the most powerful. So what is secret number three? Well, technically it's not coming from leaked documentation or Google's internal research or whatever. It's basically understanding how SEO works works and how we can leverage whatever we data we have already. The best thing about SEO is that if we are not ranking, somebody already is or somebody always is. So regardless of what keyword you want to rank for, there's already someone who is ranking number one. And by just looking at what they are doing specifically that you are not doing, you will increase the probability of ranking higher. Now, all you have to do is first of all, figure out the keyword you want to rank for, then make an incognito search. I would recommend incognito, otherwise the results might be personalized to you. So make an incognito search and look at the top five, 10, maybe 15 pages on what they are doing. Make a note of their titles, their descriptions, the meta titles, uh, the number of images, how they're formatting the content and find everything that you can about their pieces of content. Then compile them into a Google spreadsheet and figure out what you can do. Now, all of this manually is definitely doable, but if you have a lot of content to create and you create content at scale, I'm gonna show you something better, easier, and faster to do the same thing. So let me switch to my screen and I'll demonstrate that to you right now. Let's head to my screen here and I'm using a 
cool uh, tool called SEO Boost. Now, SEO Boost is a SEO software which you can use to completely plan your content and optimize your content. So, the idea I want to just take away here is that I just ran a topic report on home vegetable gardening, which I was just editing here. So, I thought, hey, let's try it out. Is this the faster way to analyze the competition? So, I just ran this topic report, and I say two hours ago, I just ran this report. Let's view the report, and in this report, all I was talking about is just presented to you in a single report. So you can see the average word count on the top ranking pages is 1739. The highest word count is this much. The readability level is this. And what's the keyword usage on the screen? You can see what's the keyword or word count across different SERPs. So you can see if you don't rank higher, don't write word count of 1155. It should be slightly on the higher end. You have a higher chance of ranking with that. The readability score is also something you can look at. You can look at the keyword frequency. You can look at the number of images that are added. So you can see a direct correlation here that if your word count is approximately this much, you have a readability score of 8th to 9th level. You have a decent keyword frequency. And if you have a lot of images, you are replicating what Google and especially users are looking for in terms of how uh, they are expecting the results to be. Then we also have content statistics, how many headlines, how many paragraphs, what's the length of the title, how many words are bolded. This is an important metric, by the way. I studied this in the algorithm leaks. Headline words and paragraph words. Then the most important part, the thing I was just talking about, you will see a list of the top converting pages, competing pages for this specific keyword. And you could look at them directly and all the data that you would search for manually can be looked at directly here. So you can see the score. This is the web website that's ranking the highest for this query. And if you click here, we can also open this up. So let's say I would see this or I'll say cookies reject all. I look at this page. I can see everything and I can do everything manually, but this will take a lot of time. But what I can do is just look at this numbers here. What's the overall score? What's the number of words? What's the readability? How much time is the keyword is used? How many images does this uh, article have? How many headlines does it have? How many paragraphs does it have? And if I click on this, I can even see the headlines they have added on the site. So I can see exactly what headlines they're using. And I can scroll through this, scroll through this, and see exactly what headlines I have. And SEO Boost is a basically a content management and con content planning software. So if you want to, let's say, uh, if you're working with a team, then you can add this to your content brief as well. That, hey, let's create a brief around, hey, let's set S2 be this, let's, let's add this. And you can create an entire, I'd say, content brief for your writers to follow and then create content around it. But this is the first step you can take. And this is just not for just this first article, but for all the pages that are ranking and the second page and the third page as well. So you'll have a lot of data to understand that, hey, if I want to rank higher, what are the patterns I can observe and what I can replicate on my website as well. And another great part about uh, SEO Boost is that you can go here on this end section and SEO Boost will find all the common questions from forums as well. So you can see a lot of these questions are coming from Quora, from Reddit and other forums. And you can take these and add them to your brief as well. Because if this website is ranking with this specific question, then users are specifically asking this question. So you can use uh, FAQ sections or FAQ schema on your site. By the way, all in one SEO has an FAQ block you can use directly and then add these kind of question answers and answer these questions on your website. You can create dedicated pages about it. And you can also have a complete word graph and there's tons of features inside SEO Boost. This is the first thing I would I want you to look at. And the second thing I want you to look at is if you already have a piece of content and you want to rank it higher, then what you can do is go into the content audits report. And what you can do is just enter URL that you have on your website and then enter the keyword that you're trying to rank for. Now, this website, this is a test website. So I already did this a couple of days ago for a keyword called local SEO. So I'll show you the report on how it looks like. This is very useful and powerful. If you already have a piece of uh, content and you're seeing, hey, what am I missing in this piece of content that I can add or as a remove or optimize so that I can rank higher. So you can see here, you can run a full comparison between your page and all the competing pages. So you'll see a word count, readability score, keyword frequency, number of images here, then comparison between your articles and top competing pages in terms of headlines, paragraphs, 
title lens, bold words, headline words, paragraph words, and also what are the keywords that you are not adding or you should improve overall in terms of how your website or page should be structured. Everything will be given here. All the optimization tips will be given here. Then also the phrases you can add to your article and everything. And this is a complete, as I said, a content planning and as a optimization suite. So it also has content optimization features. I was working on this, for example, look at this piece of content. You have a complete content optimizer here as well. So if your team, if your manager team of writers, if you write yourself, you can just add or start writing the content inside SEO boost so that all the uh, analysis we did, for example, you can see this is my brief. I was just showing this off and you have what kind of words you should add, what kind of phrases you should add, what are total words, total keywords, images, everything can be done right inside SEO boost. So everything I mentioned can be done manually. You can do it manually, but SEO boost is just a faster way of doing this in my opinion. All right. So those are the three secrets you should keep in mind to optimize your website for higher rankings. Let's revise quickly. So the first one was earn the click and keep users on site. So optimize your titles and the descriptions and create engaging content. Second one was freshness. So look at the content DK report in search console and all in one SEO to understand which pages you should optimize for. And third is optimize or just look at what's already working and model after them. And I demonstrated easier ways to get things done, or let's say at volume with all in one SEO and with SEO boost go check both plugins out i'll leave them uh, in the description and also in the pinned comment because they'll make your life a lot easier when creating lots of content optimizing it and making sure that you get higher rankings hopefully you like this video these interesting things and if you want to continue your seo and wordpress and website building education then the subscribe button should be on the screen somewhere it's completely free so make sure to hit that button as well make sure to like the video share this video if you think this information is useful for somebody else and you're watching yuvraj from double beginner and i'll catch you in the next video really 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 soon. Take care.